I've been re-watching all of my favourite teen films and getting so much fashion inspiration. This Versace dress from 13 Going On 30 made me drop everything and immediately try to recreate it. Unfortunately, I don't have any fabrics that are anything like this dress. It's a pretty unique dress. And I also wanted to go for brighter spring colors. So I ended up going for this pastel green and pink. I know my dress is entirely green. We will address that later. I completely forgot to address why my top is entirely green in the end. Basically, I've made this top three times. The first two times were complete disasters. I got my measurements all wrong and I eventually ran out of that pink fabric. So I ended up having to use just all green. The rest of the footage in this tutorial is going to be with the pink and green fabrics because by the time I got to my third attempt with the all green fabric, I thought that this entire project was gonna be a disaster. And so I just stopped filming it. But all the steps are exactly the same. It's just my measurements that were a little bit off. So everything should still all make sense in the rest of this video. But I believe this fabric is called neoprene. It's it's really thick and kind of bouncy and there's a little bit of stretch so I thought it was a really good choice because the thickness gives it a bit of a more high quality look um, but the stretch also makes it so that it would fit a lot easier even if I make a lot of mistakes. I think my boobs are too big which is something I've never said ever before. And I don't have any cool printed fabrics. I didn't want to buy anything new, so I ended up using this green chiffon for the skirt. It matches the green of the top, um, and I also use some lining because chiffon is very see-through. Let's get started with the pattern. I always get so many questions about my patterns. How I make my patterns is I basically just look at what I want and draw them out. So this, for example, I'm looking at my original inspo and as you can see, there's like a panel out on the front of the top that just goes straight across, just like a rectangle. So I'll draw out a rectangle and the length of the rectangle has to go all the way across. So I literally just look at the picture, see where that rectangle has to go, and I will measure that rectangle on myself. So like I can see that that rectangle needs to go from like here to here. It needs to just go like all the way across my chest. And that is the length of my rectangle. And also, the width of the rectangle has to sort of go like halfway across my boobs. So that would be the width of my rectangle. And then there's a panel under that, that I don't know what that shape is called, but it's like a rectangle that dips in in the middle. Um, so you see the overall shape of the top, it kind of pulls in in the middle and then there's more space on either side. It's because they've got these incredible boobs to fill it out. And so we're kind of taking a rectangle and sucking that rectangle in, in the middle to create that shape. I hope that made sense. If it didn't, I have drawn out the pattern with all the measurements labeled on there, exactly what you'll need. And um, you just need to apply your own measurements to that pattern. It's on my Instagram stories highlights right now under green leaf emoji pattern. Side note, I think I'm just gonna do that for everything that I make in the future. I'm gonna post my pattern where you can put in your own measurements um, on my Instagram stories highlights. I think that's probably the easiest way to do it um you know you can like easily access it just like on the highlights page so yeah i'll probably do that for everything in the future as for the rest of the top it's literally just made up of rectangles the strap is just one long rectangle and these are my measurements but i got the measurement by just like measuring from the back over my shoulder around my boob i don't know if you can see um around the other boob over my other shoulder and to the back again because that's exactly where the strap is going and then the last pieces that you need for the top are just two more rectangles that will attach the front to the closure at the back so the length of it is just going to be from here to the back and the okay the width for the closure at the back i use these bra extenders that i bought from amazon and i love them okay forgive me i'm about to go on a rampage about how amazing these things are firstly they're so easy to install you just open them up 
put the raw edge of your fabric so you don't even need to hem it just stuff it in there sew over it with white thread and that's it secondly it's adjustable so you're guaranteed a perfect fit you don't get that adjustability with like zips and buttons which are also way more harder to install in my opinion and thirdly to combat all of those other issues i used to make all of my tops tie up at the back um because then that means that you can just tie it to whatever size that you need but then that wastes a lot of fabric because you have to use so much extra length so these things these little bra extenders just fix all of those issues like they're perfect i love them i'll make sure to link the ones that i use in the description but i highly highly recommend okay back to the pattern um so your back rectangles length is easy but make sure the width is just a few millimeters less than the width of your bra extenders. I made the mistake of not paying attention to the width of my rectangles at first and it was a problem. So definitely make sure you get the width of the back right. But yeah, that's it for the pattern of the top. The entire top is just made up of rectangles. It's just four rectangles and then one concave rectangle. Super simple, I love it. As for the actual construction for the top, when I cut out the pieces that I needed, I made sure to double the width of all of my rectangles, folded them in half, sewed them in place, flipped them inside out and ironed them down. So all of my edges are really nice and seamless, there's no raw edges, no visible hemming. Um, I tend to do that with everything that I make. Remember to keep in mind that you need seam allowance. The rest of it is pretty self-explanatory. Just sew all of your pieces together, right sides facing each other, um, but do make sure to do it in this order. So you want to sew the two chest rectangles together first and iron down that seam and then pin the long strap around the sides and the bottom of your chest rectangle and then sew your back rectangles to the sides of the strap and then sew the straps to the back and that's it. Moving on to the skirt, I'm just gonna skim over this footage and pretend. I'm gonna pretend like I didn't spend an entire day making a skirt that ended up being a complete disaster. And I'm just gonna start at this point. I decided to go for a half circle skirt. Um, I really love how I didn't notice that my tripod was loose whilst filming this bit. So we have some strangely cinematic shots of me drawing this half circle skirt. Um, you can't see what I'm doing though, so I'll just explain exactly what I did here. I drew and cut out two quarter circles. I don't know why, that was really stupid of me because I just ended up sewing two straight sides together anyway. So if you're doing this, then fold your fabric in half and draw a quarter circle at the right angle. You only need two measurements for this. So you just need this measurement around here half that measurement and that's going to be the length of your quarter circle and the second measurement is just how long you want the skirt to be and then you just take your tape measure and move along the small circle marking the length that you want to create a bigger quarter circle cut that out remember to include seam allowance and there is your half circle skirt i have two layers the green chiffon and the lining so i just place them on top of each other and attach them at the top at the waistband bit. After overlocking the raw edge of that, I then sewed an extra line of stitching attaching the edge to the lining. Because when you have two fabrics attached together like this and it's folded over here, say this hand is the green chiffon and this hand is the lining, please ignore my missing nail. So the two fabrics should be attached here and just laying flat together like this. But what tends to happen is that fold at the top won't stay in place and the lining will start folding over and showing at the front, which is really ugly. So to prevent that from happening, we sew that edge to the lining to hold it down. And so we can only ever see the chiffon or the nice fabric from the front. And then I'm sure you know how to make a half circle skirt. I just attached the two straight edges together with an invisible zip and closed off the rest of the length. Thank you. 
I really like to push the boundaries when it comes to the lengths of my skirts. I'm super short, so I like my clothes to be super short, but that means that my ideal length for a skirt is just a few millimeters away from being a top. So I'm sure you can guess what went wrong here. Um, I cut my skirt way too short and I didn't have enough fabric to make another one. But luckily, I had just spent the day before making a skirt that was a complete failure. So I took that failed skirt and I cut out loads of strips of green chiffon from the length of my failed skirt, cut them all open, attached them together to make one super long strip. I don't know how long it was, it was just long. I would say that spending a day making a failed skirt is definitely not necessary for this. So if you haven't done that, then you can just cut out a long strip of fabric and that would probably be a lot easier. So after overlocking the edge of my long strip, I started pinning it to the bottom of my skirt to create sort of a frill situation and to add some much needed length and weight to my skirt. Sewed it all in place, overlocked all of my raw edges and we are done with the skirt. The only thing left is to attach the top and the skirt together, but I really liked the top just by itself. Um, in fact, I've already worn it out just as a top, so I wanted to be able to keep it that way. So once again, I used my safety pins. I love my safety pins. They're easy, they're breezy, they don't ruin any of your hard work, and they're removable. But you could also use those pop buttons, probably be a little bit more professional. And that is how I made my dress. Obviously looks nothing like the original, it's a completely different vibe, but I like my version still, I think it's cute. And I've actually already seen someone recreate this dress. Nicole on TikTok and Instagram, she used the pattern that I posted on my Instagram stories and used completely different fabrics, completely different colour scheme, and it still turned out so cute and it made me so happy to see. So yeah, if you take inspiration from this, please tag me in your work because that would make me even more happy. Okay, I feel like I've been talking so much, but last thing I wanna say, that I have loads of clothes that I want to make for the upcoming summer, mostly super trendy pieces that are just like really popping off right now. So my idea for this YouTube channel is to create a series where I show you guys how I make my entire summer wardrobe. And yes, I know it's only March, spring has barely begun, but I want to do it far in advance of summer actually starting, in advance of lockdown finally ending, so that we can all spend our gorgeous summers on trend, super stylish, but in a sustainable, handmade, financially responsible way. So let me know what you think should be in my summer wardrobe for this year and what should be included in this series. And as always, leave any questions that you have in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.